Guys, look at that. The snake is holding her mic up for her. So it's skinny mother. <laughs> it looks like he's talking into the snake, into the mic. Are these red guys? <laughs> Todd tries to not be Asian. Show them your move to try to not be Asian. I go like this. <laughs> I go what? <laughs> she feels like my soul sister. Hey, oh sister, so sister. <laughs> no. Gotta get that hole, mister. That, that hole? Is that how it goes? Hi, guys. Welcome to Annie Wood, episode 63. Two. 62. <laughs> I knew it was wrong. I looked right at him. Um, we have a great episode. We introduce a new family member. And it's just a good cutie. We love you. We love our Woody's Cooties Shooties. Um, you can see me next. I'm going to be in Edmonton in Alberta, Canada. I have a very funny promo video I just made about that. that you can see on my Instagram. Get your tickets this weekend. Um, then on February 24th, I have an Annie Wood and Friends at the Comedy Store. Oop, and I forgot before that, February 21st, Bonnie McFarlane and I are doing a one time only, one night only show at the New York Comedy or at the stand in New York City. It is me, Bonnie McFarlane, Tim Dillon, and Mark Norman and Love Fur. You know two of them. And um, it's called Pick Me Girls, and it's really fun, and we're the only girls allowed on the show. But come hang out. It's going to be such a fun show. Bonnie's my best friend, and we're so funny together, and we're very excited about this show. Also, I'm going to be in Denver, Colorado at the Comedy Works, February like 16th and 17th, <laughs> I think. Um, then uh, there's another Annie Wood and Friends. Then I'm in Vancouver. I'm in... March, okay, March, I know these, I've memorized, memorized these dates. Fort Worth, I'm going to be there the first weekend in Fort Worth, Texas. Then I'm going to Albuquerque to the casino. I'm so excited. Um, that is March 7th and 8th. I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. at the end of, D of the month of March. And then I'm in Jacksonville at the end of June. More dates are being added. I'm so excited. My hour is almost exactly ready for my special, so you're going to want to come see it. Um, go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. And if you live in New Mexico, I promise you that weekend is going to be the most amazing weekend of all of our lives. So, um, like, comment, subscribe, and I can't wait for, for you guys to meet Walter. Oh, he just yawned. Really? And his mouth opened. It was really cute. Really? I missed yes. this. Yes. So <laughs> it was so cute. Welcome to Annie Wood. Hello, guys. Welcome to Annie Wood episode. 62. 62, baby. And boy, do we have something exciting. Show them. We have a new Lift son. Lift it up. Oh. Look at my new son. Isn't What's his he name? so cute? His name's Walter. That's what they named him. He's a good boy. We may rename him, but. We might rename him. Rename him. He's a butter eat enchi uh, ball python. So we're trying to think of like something buttery. What's like a good buttery name? Landon, like Lando Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, bud? Where are you going? <laughs> She's a little nervous. It's okay. I'm not nervous. I'm strong. <laughs> I'm tough, my pickle girl. <laughs> Do you love him? Why is he on my table? Like that. <laughs> He's sniffing. Every He's guy's like this. Bite her <laughs> my snake bites my snake's gonna bite my snake bites um but we went to the um can you hear me okay with the mic this far yeah okay and move the mic but my hands are you all get a oh. where are you going hi slithy hi slithy <sighs> we went to the reptile super show on sunday it was beautiful in pomona we have some great videos coming out. We have some really funny videos. <laughs> He's so cute. He loves his mother. Is he distracting? You want me to hold him? Is it distracting you too much? I like him. <laughs> loves my poop. Oh, he's going in the pit. He's gone. <laughs> this might be the whole him. episode, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, we went to the, we went to the um, show, and there was this one table of all women. Okay, I thought it was all women. Turns out there was one trans. But it was all women and no. a he, him. A he, them? No, a he, him. Oh, okay. Who's he, him? 
But anyway, I go, oh, I like all these babes. What's the story? And so the woman had been, her husband left her with all these snakes. He cheated on her of 22 years, left her. <laughs> He's going up my back. <laughs> you want me to hold them? If you want. Let me hold them. This is, what's wrong? You're getting like between the nose? The nose is, yeah. <laughs> Come here, Walter. You're yeah. a little distracted, guys. I'll hold him up. Oh. Isn't he so cute? You want to go around my neck? I'll hold on to him because you've been getting distracted. Okay, I was getting a little distracted. <laughs> but anyway, so we went to this table and there were all these snakes and all these women. And I was like, what's going on with the babes? And I knew there was a story. And so this this woman's husband of 22 years had cheated on her and left her and left all these snakes. So she's like, I'm selling these. These are my divorce snakes. And Annie really felt this woman. And she I said, okay. I'll buy a divorce snake. <laughs> so well, we this was, it was Annie's first. It was Annie's first reptile super show. It was my reptile super and show. And she didn't understand <laughs> it. She was like, I, I don't understand. How is it? Is it cool? Is it fun? And I'm like, you'll see. It was amazing. And the minute we got there, Annie was trying to buy all, all the reptiles. Luckily, the Lord shut all of my credit cards <laughs> off. <laughs> but there was those geckos that you really liked, right? The, there were these geckos with eyes so big I started crying. They were so was beautiful and gecko. so cute that I almost wept. We got to get one of those. Tears of joy. Tears of joy. I want them around my neck. I don't feel safe with them on my shoulder like this. But we got Walter. He's so cute. But then, I was like looking at another one. He really picked her out. But he, he hugged me. And the person said this would be a great podcast snake because he's so personable. So we're going to just, we're just a snake podcast now, guys. Sorry. He's, he really is. Look at this, guys. Our other ball python will not do this. She would be biting us. <laughs> but <laughs> he's a good boy. He he's, he's six years old. He's six years old. So he's like, this is as big as he's going to get. So we'll have him for another 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe even longer. Yeah. But he's our, he's our guy. We love him. See, you he, are a little distracted to, when you're around him. But I'm allowed to be distracted. <laughs> this is your podcast. Should we tell everyone that we're um, we're cosplaying being poor? Yes, we're we're cosplaying being poor right now. Uh, it's All not really cosplay, money. but All our <laughs> where's he going? Walter, he's going in the plant. Oh my gosh, Walter. he's a snake. He wants the plant. Here, lay on my lap. How about that? Is that fun for you? No, no. no. He wants. He always wants to go underneath the chairs. Oh, he's such a cute boy. He'll calm down soon. Where's Randy? Look Hopefully he just doesn't he eat he's Randy. He's so cute. Did he eat Randy? <laughs> I don't think so. Todd doesn't know. Look how big this thing is. Look, he's a little tiny snake. He gets thinking he can't eat Randy. But he is that so cute. That thing could cute. squeeze Randy. He gets squeezed. He, they don't do that. But they wouldn't, he wouldn't he squeeze. He squeezed my neck just a second ago. You put him around my neck. It was a weak sne squeeze. No, it was squeezing <laughs> tight. And it was just going to tighten. It was a very weak squeeze. Guys, this is just the episode's going to be. Look how long he is, guys. He's like stretched across my arm. What a reptile. He's very strong. <laughs> Look at this guy. Whoa. He's beautiful. You want to hold him again? Yeah, I love him. Don't get distracted. Here, bud. Well, you lead the conversation because I don't remember what we're talking about. <laughs> um, we're talking about that we went to the reptile show very, very broke. We just went there because we were doing some man on the street stuff that's going to come out. We have out. some really good man on the street coming. Um, and they're going to keep coming. We're doing it on a regular basis. But um, <laughs> it's so hard to not just be looking at my snake. I love him. He'll chill out, I think. I think he's just excited right now. Aren't we all? <laughs> but anyway. We did Man on the Street. It was really fun. All of the credit cards. Here's the thing. We really forgot that over the holidays, you don't make money. Is he Everyone making a weird noise down. around the mic? No, it's awesome. <laughs> Look at that, dude. This is good TV. <laughs> Everyone shut down. They're not paying you. She's like, all right, be calm. I'm spending, the all my, I'm spending all my money on. Just don't let them go through your hoop. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want him to go through my hoop. We'll name him Philly. If Guys, he goes to my hoop, his name is Philly. This is a uh, <laughs> this is a test to see if Annie could uh, uh, keep her, her attention while a snake slithers around her neck, goes up her neck, <laughs> goes around her body. <laughs> 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 uh, 
She's He's not squeezing. scared. She's very not He's scared. He's squeezing my wrist in. The whole day yesterday, he was all around her wrist. It was so, so cute. cute. Now it's, he's like hugging his mother. Now he's like excited. He's like wants to play. Does he want to play or choke me? I can't tell. He's not going to want to choke you. Snakes, Look, they only choke back around. things seriously when they want to eat it. He's coming back around. The neck? Look. His little head's coming? Look, it's popping out. Where? It's under my hair. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> 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 so yes. she's snake girl now i'm snake girl now anyway he's holding the mic for her that's cute so <laughs> credit cards are on pause so our producers that we're getting they're getting an i they're getting an iou an one IOU. of them knows this is lauren's first <laughs> hearing about it but lauren has a real job we worry about mike <laughs> we worry about michael michael really needed this money but it's an iou and there's no other options so <laughs> Your money went to the snake. Sorry. So how does it feel being a, a new snake mom with such I a big snake? I feel very excited and happy. And I feel like I always wanted to be a snake person because my mom was so afraid of them. I wanted to rebel against her. <laughs> my mom, when we were little, she dropped us. She One of the infamous stories is we were in a canoe at my family's, my mom's side of the family has like a cabin in Vermont and that they have a little lake and we're in the canoe and in the little canoe holder where, um, where they have like, a hole where you can put rope in to tie it to the dock. There was a snake. There was like a bunch of snakes. And my mom dropped us in the water and abandoned us in the thing. Like we almost, well, we didn't almost drown, but she screamed, dropped us and abandoned us in the thing. Well, that's, that's what you, how that's what you do. That's where you get it from. You pushed your own mother to get away from a fake zombie. <laughs> that I paid for in that escape room. <laughs> my 71 year old mom, I shoved her out of my way, lady. Look, he loves the your voice. He like goes around your I really want the, all the reptiles like my voice. He ra that's why he likes her Because my voice sounds throat. like their skin is scaly. <laughs> he is so cute. I love him and I like him wrapped around You always the wanted a big snake, right? I all of a our big snakes snake. are baby snakes, so it didn't feel like you had a snake, right? And I love them, but I didn't have yeah, I didn't have a big one. When you have baby snakes, it doesn't feel like you really have a snake until they're big. I love him. So we were kind of there and we we're like, should we just get a big snake? That way we have one. Yeah. We can walk out and with the it on the And the big snakes neck. are actually cheaper than the baby snakes because people want to kind of like. Raise them. Raise them. And but sometimes the bigger snakes are more expensive because they're already raised. And but we saw a lot. There were a lot of woodies at the convention. Oh, there was a lot of woodies, guys. I was guys. getting recognized left and right. And you know, two things I love, reptiles and recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love to be stopped on the street. Oh, God, I'll never stop it. They said, I'm oh, never, you're a oh, I will my never God. be, no matter how successful and recognizable I get, I will never not like it. I know. I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but Walter picked Annie out. She said, Yeah, I'm looking for like a bigger snake, like an adult snake. And then the girl went, or the they them went. Um, no, it was a boy. The boy, a trans boy, went. Uh, he went. Oh well, we've got a really beautiful. We were like, we want a big beautiful snake, and they went. Oh, we got a big beautiful one, and they. He went and pulled out the thousand dollar snake. He was like, "This is the one." And you we're want. like, "Okay, the credit card shot off." Like, okay. <laughs> How about when I was paying him too, and and he goes, "Don't give me more than what we asked." I was like, "I'm not." <laughs> <laughs> Trust us. <laughs> But so then we're like, well, what do you have more budget wise? And they're like, well, we have this guy, Walter. They thought he said butter wise. And they gave us the butter snake. So he's, he's like, this so is cute. Walter. Is he cute as a, a butter snake? They said he's so personable. He's so sweet. They said you could grab his head and he won't like do anything. You could like do anything. And he's the sweetest boy. And it's been true so far. We love him. Look at him. He's this is exactly so how I wanted him to lay. <laughs> I can't really move that. He's much, holding the mic. Let go of him. I love that. Let's he's see if he the holds mic. the mic. Oh, that's so cute. That is cute. Guys. What if you went on stage and he just held the mic I'm for you take on him. stage? Well, his name's Walter. I'm going to do a show at UCB, and I said it's going to be my first Walt comedy show instead of alt comedy. <laughs> do the wide shot mic, guys. Look at that. The snake is holding her mic up for her. So <laughs> it's skinny. It looks like he's talking into the snake into the mic. Yeah. Look how skinny I am, guys. <laughs> All I got to say is, oh, 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 Zemtik. <laughs> you guys got to do it. Get it. It's the best. <laughs> so 
<laughs> wow. How, how have you had, how has it been? Why don't you share your experience a little bit here? Doing semi, I'm on semi-glutide, so it's, it's the generic it's generic Oz, Ozem. It's awesome. It's great. It's, everyone like talks about horrible side effects. I've had nothing but joy and pleasure. Have I not been like better? She's been so good. She's been wanting to get snakes and reptiles with me. I'm it's hungry. Kind of Here's the thing. I'm hungry. People are like, I have no appetite. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm hungry. I just eat normal like a regular person. I just eat until I'm not hungry. <laughs> and it's helping me with like, like addictive feelings and like feelings of ADHD, ADHD and like negative thoughts. I mean, I still, have, I'm still working on that, but. You know what, though? It's always because you have to do it once a week, right? Mm -hmm. It's always at the tail end of the week. So it's like when the Ozempic is when it's you're losing the Ozempic. So tomorrow we're fucked. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> Tuesday is already my triggering day. <laughs> it's when Trash Tuesday comes out. And I used to be, before Ozempic, I used to read comments. Now I don't read comments anymore. Todd's like, oh, no, it's Trash Tuesday day. <laughs> I just want to say this is still so cute. The snake is literally holding the microphone for Annie. I love it. If he did this every time. Uh, <laughs> I love him. Uh, oh guys, my isn't God. this so cute? What I'm like guys... the number one pick me girl. Look at me. Look guys, at me, boys. Uh, I play video games too. Write in the comments. You think Walter is a good name or should we rename, uh, rename him? Walter's a pretty good name. I know, but I Because he's a gentleman. Walter's like a gentleman's <laughs> name. Yeah, and I have my Walt comedy joke. What Walt comedy joke? You didn't hear it. I already said it. I'm yeah. doing a UCB alt show. It's gonna. Uh, I'm gonna bring him on stage. It'll be my first Walt comedy show. Okay. I don't he get gets it. it. <laughs> well, you're drinking my beauty pie drink. <laughs> Guys, pick me. Pick me, girl. <laughs> love football. She I'm just loves, crushing this down. I love football. football. That's esports. I know, but Bo, um, this is YouTubing. This is video games. <laughs> And then also I'm saying on top of that, I love football. And she's a reptile girl now. But so. I loved it. I'm not going to stop this nonsense. I'm in. A, I'm in. I love this. Um, I needed a big snake because I wanted my, my pine snake. I really wanted to be able to hold him a lot. And he's just a burrowing snake. He'll get there. He'll get there. I know, but I can't. I was Your magic about... mind is over there. That's my magic mind. She tries to steal my magic mind, guys. Mine, magic mine. 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 <laughs> magic mine. <laughs> Look how cute he's like hiding in your hair. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. I love him. I like how none of our um, team is scared of him. Yeah. Are you, how, scared? Are you guys scared? No, I, we're not scared. <laughs> Sorry, microphone. I'm not scared. Are you scared? Yeah. No. Really? Yeah. You guys are comfortable? We won't pet him. Really? I pet him. Like, it's like, I don't know if, say I had to do, a, like, you had to leave me to feed him or something. I can handle it. I'd be more afraid of, like, a, a dead rat. I would, in a million <laughs> a dead years. Mouse. I, I'm so sorry. I would be way scared if you were watching my snake. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't. I would be, listen, I don't think I would have them without Todd because I would forget to put the lid on. So you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not really, you can't really I leave me alone. I ADD. I can't trust, so I certainly can't trust secondhand. <laughs> yeah, no, and you're right. You're right not to. <laughs> Even yeah, on reptiles, you need to. Have, I can't believe uh, that we were like, "Is the mic close enough?" And then he literally pulled it closer to me. That's so cute. <laughs> he's a podcasting. And he's snake. enjoying. He's just happy sitting here. He's is a podcasting snake. This is so cute. We got a podcasting snake, guys. You ever believe that would happen? <laughs> and my mom isn't like she when I showed it. Her, him, he, she didn't like jump. I think she's getting over her. Fears. And if you guys at home are afraid of snakes, take this to. Sh this is how snakes are. Look how cute that is. Most snakes are like this. So like, don't be scared of snakes. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Look you know, Brian Barcheck. Oh, we want to live on through. We want Brian Barcheck to live on through us. And his one of his main goals in his vlogs and in life was to get people who are afraid of snakes and reptiles to understand them and go. Oh, are you welling up? I'm I was on, up. listen, I went on a weekend, a hallucinogen <laughs> weekend with my girlfriends to Santa Fe, my ayahuasca friends, and Todd FaceTimed me like three times, and I finally pick up, and he's like, I've been crying. What was I crying about? You watched Brian's goodbye video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so sad. Brian Barczyk, we talked about this on the last episode, but if you guys don't, oh, no, I have the hiccups. <laughs> it's Ooh, not a mouse. <laughs> hiccups are not good for Annie. Well, they're not good for me because it's the only time I 
have to be quiet. Ooh, she gets so mad when she gets hiccups. You know what I remember when I went to Santa Fe? How much the librarians loved me because they knew me because they had to hush me all the time, but they liked me. Oh my God. I was talking so loud all the time. They're like, can you just Because you gave purpose to their job. They're, they're like, I could me. finally be a hushing librarian. <laughs> Peg. I'll never forget Peg. Oh. She's so cute. Peggy Sue? No, but she, I don't know what her full name was, but Peg, the librarian at the College of Santa Fe, when the college went out of business, she started working at the um, community college library. Oh. So she might still be there. And one day I'll go check. But I will say this. I'm very excited about my, my, uh, my New Mexico shows coming up. And being in Santa Fe, uh, as I talked about on past podcasts, I feel really sad when I'm in Philadelphia. I don't feel like this is my home. Not like, I mean, a little bit I do. And I think I could get there. I could like grow to love Philadelphia. But Philadelphia represents like not a good time in my life. I didn't feel good. I, a lot of bad things happened to me in high school. It's just like. The people. The, well, not the specific people, but I just don't like, I don't know. I just never like felt. But it's also like, there's some people you don't want to run into. There's that's what it's like. I when I visit into. my hometown, a lot that's of what it's I don't like. Run into. I'm like, I don't want to run into these people. I the don't want person to I wanted to run into, we ran into last time we were in Philly, which was the brother of this kid, Michael, who I used to work with at Easter Seals. One of my campers. I was like, oh, okay, that was interesting that we ran into just one of the three people I would want to see, which is like their family members, basically. But it's just, yeah, I just have a lot of bad memories and I feel just like not very safe in Philadelphia. And then in Santa Fe, I, that's like my home because I think that's where I had my dreams and I like was on my own and I felt so I was doing, I did a ketamine trip there. Thank you, Mind Boom. Guys, I'm not sponsored by Mind Boom on this episode, but <laughs> you got to get it. <laughs> What's my promo code? Uh, Annie Wood, I think. Oh I'm my God! Sure. Just <laughs> the hell do I know? You're the guy. What the hell do I know? Anyway, you guys got to. I'm do just it. a snake guy. But anyway, so I, but I was <laughs> feeling like in the ketamine, I was like, oh my God, this is like where I, like, I don't know, became a grown up and was on my own and quit drinking. I did everything. Well, I, no, How I old were you? Eighteen. I was eighteen to twenty five there. That's beautiful. But I love it there so much, and I'm so excited to do shows there. And I have a whole. Wow, vision. you were there for five years or seven, seven years? Seven years, yeah. Seven years. Yeah, I love it so much. It, I want to take you, but I will tell you that my tour is just like I got fingered in that bathroom. Oh I my banged the bartender God. there. Ew. Whatever. Well, you don't have any other memories. <laughs> there's a lot of there's. <laughs> Let's just say I was fingered in many corners. Oh, my Seven God. Seven years. 18 to 29, the fingering years. You don't got any other memory, any good memories? They're not bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> what Nothing. about I celebrated Christmas here. I watched the Super Bowl there. You don't have anything like that? Super Bowl party at the, they shut down the restaurant that I used to work at, the Cowgirl, for Super Bowl for all the staff everyone was banging we were triple kissing oh the, my the, god one of the busters tried to figure i was like whoa whoa whoa!" i remember you just like threw his hands on me. oh like, no, my no, no, who no, is no. this guy let's get him canceled no one to be canceled i'm fun. canceling him what's his name rodrigo <laughs> <laughs> i think his name was miguel he was hot though he was really hot but i'd never gotten any vibes from him like that so it was you very see surprising. that was your santa fe was my philly when i went to I'll philly find i was pictures, going like that. actually here are pictures from this party <laughs> <laughs> well, you we'll gotta send them to pictures. me tonight. I will. <laughs> but, but I had so much fun. It was just such a fun time. I mean, it was like I was a drunk there, so it was like my crazy times. I went into. I didn't see anyone, any of my friends, just because I couldn't. I was there just to have like a spiritual trip with my girls, so I like didn't tell any of my friends that were there. So now I have to go back in February and hang out with my Santa Fe friends. But I didn't see anyone. Like we wandered around. My Uggs got destroyed and ruined, so that's why I got these boots. Aren't these boots so cute? They match my jacket. I love them. Oh. But we went to all my favorite restaurants, and then I went into this old bar that I used to go to just to pee, and there was this guy, Alan, who was still sitting Alan's there. Alan's Pet Center? That's where we get. We get. <laughs> no, but he was, st he goes, I walk in, he goes, Annie? It was, like, funny that he recognized me right away. Like, I just opened the door, and it was, like, immediate. And I was like, oh my God, right where I left you, Alan. Still sitting here since 2008. <laughs> I don't know if he was insulted when I said that, but it's true. 
Well, You're some still people. Sitting. He's a musician, though. He plays in bars. Some people stuff. like that life. Some people are content living a life of just yeah. repeat and safety and just. But I went on a safe hop. Things. Did I ever tell you about when I went on the hot air balloon ride there? Yes, and you fell out the balloon. When they were landing, they were like, brace yourself, brace yourself. And then we shot out of it. And my lesbian friend was on the. Yes. Did I say it on here? Yes. You said oh. it to Danny Burke, and Danny Burke went, whoa. <laughs> oh, I said it like two episodes ago. <laughs> anyway, but like, I don't know. It was just, it was a crazy fun time. I just love it there. I love it so much. We have to get married there, I think. I'll do it. It's so cute. And I rented another truck. I'm supposed to have a Ford F 150. You saw that in your Academy Vision? I drove it and I was driving into Santa Fe and I was like, how do I leave my life but keep my life but also live here? You have a glitter, right? <laughs> Got it. I have a snake on my neck. It's so cool. I was going to say we could bring him down, like we'd have him on for like 10 minutes and then bring him back in his cage. If he stays here, I want him. He seems pretty chill. I absolutely am He's in heaven. He's holding the mic. That is a crazy thing to do for a snake to do. It's so cute. Like <laughs> I love him and my hair looks cute. Everything looks cute. He's holding the mic. I can't believe it. He's so cute. And we have the, we're going to ignore that that's there. What? The stocking. Oh, no, the stocking. <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like I got my vacation. So I went with my girlfriends. We rented this like mansion. It was so beautiful. And it's so fun. Like when you're manifesting things, it's like sometimes it's hard to really imagine yourself in a place. So I feel like if you really want to, if one of your goals is to have a beautiful big mansion, what you should do is go to the town you want to go with with a group of your friends and just Airbnb it and just live in it and imagine it's your house. And that will help you with your manifestations. But it was crazy to get my credit card shut off when I was feeling the most rich I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> I did a ketamine trip where did I tell the jackpotting one yet? Yes. That wasn't on the podcast yet. That was on last week's. Oh. Oh, my God. Sorry, they blend together. I'm sorry. I, my whole life is podcasting, and everyone's mad at me for telling them I'm tired. No, you just told the story to a thousand people. I didn't know if you told it on the podcast yet. Well, I'm sorry. If you were a jackpotting slot machine, slot machine you wouldn't tell people? I'm a jackpotting slot machine every goddamn okay, day so of my now life. My new, okay, so in my ketamine trip, I was in a frozen tundra. Like, I was in Antarctica. And I, was, I woke up and I told my friends, I was like, I think we have to go to Antarctica. And my friend goes, okay, I'll start looking into it. And we're just going to go to Antarctica. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, this is why ketamine is such a good, powerful medicine and helps you so much. It shows you anything's possible. And I've actually gotten to a point where when I'm in the K-hole, I can take myself places I want to go. I'm just like, I want to go everywhere. I was like, and I was jumping through a waterfall. Can you go to the moon? Yeah. Can you go to a cave? Yeah. Can you go to the center of the earth? Yeah. You know where else I can go? Where? Epstein's Island. <laughs> <laughs> what a crock of shit that was, huh? That list. We have a plan. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, where's the list? Everyone's like, oh, it's a very long It's not a interview. list. It was a 900 page story. We had and to now, read a story like a book. Nobody wants to read it. So here's what we've decided to do. We're going to do a special episode of Annie Wood where it's just us reading it out loud to you so you don't have to read it. And it's just, uh, uh, these aren't my kids, Jeffrey exclaimed. <laughs> I, mean, I want no exclaims in my we list. We don't want to hear a gasp. <laughs> she was a gasp, as she said. <laughs> Stephen Hawkins' crumpled body took on three women. It's crazy. They want three me to read women. a book? I'm not reading a book to find out who the hell was on Jepstein's Can I? Jepstein? <laughs> Jepstein? Jepstein? Is that his name, Jepstein? <laughs> Maybe we should name him Jet because I really want to manifest Jets in my life. Jet? He's a Walter more than a Jet. He's holding the mic. It's so uh, gentleman like. Maybe Alfred? What do you guys think? Alfred's so cute. <laughs> I love this snake. He's holding the mic. It's cute. I feel so cool. Do you feel, does it feel good if him I feel like around? a goddess, honestly, right now. Do you feel like one with nature? I feel one with nature. I feel like a goddess. I feel like I could cry. I love him so much. I'm really <laughs> so excited. <laughs> she got her snake, guys. She, this is the one she wanted so long. It I mean, her. I love all my other snakes, too. And he they're going to be you. like, are you crying, too? I'm not crying. Never Your cried in my are life. Red. Your eyes red. are red. Are these red, guys? <laughs> Todd tries to not be Asian. Show them your move to try to not be Asian. I go like this. <laughs> I go what? 
<laughs> I go, what? <laughs> I go, what's up, dog? <laughs> Me, Asian? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kind of miss your long hair. I don't. It was so cute. I was looking at an old clip, and it's so cute when it was curling under your ears. Ooh, I don't like that curl. It gets. It I, I don't like at, things. It was kind of I mean. pulling it out of the top, though. <laughs> what? You started getting a little thinner. That's on the, the thing top. with long hair. People that are losing their hair, I feel like they subconsciously want to get long hair because they're like, "This might be the last time I have." hair on top of my yeah. head but what in act actuality what it does is makes you lose more hair quicker what was that is my theory don't close your eyes you look asian <laughs> <laughs> don't squint <laughs> speaking of asians we watched the uh golden globe oh my god what's wrong with that i listen i have a hot take on joe coy's I don't think he bombed. I think he thought he was bombing, so said something, and now everyone's like, you bombed. But if you think everything was fine, it's just the audience. Joe Coy is like a superstar, so he's used to doing these, like, he's an arena act, so he's used to doing arenas where he's smashing to all these With people. With all thousands and thousands of Asian people. So many Asian people. It's like a Chinatown in one theater. I, who was there that was Asian? <laughs> Ali Wong. Name another one. <laughs> Fucking uh, exactly. Stephen Yang. Is that his name? Yen. Oh, you said it wrong again. <laughs> Yen, Stephen Yen. Stevens Hens. Oh my God, Randy is getting Randy's jealous. Randy's jealous. Randy, <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Oh, oh my God, he just rolled over on his back. Lauren's petting him. Oh my God. <laughs> Randy is. Why do we have the cutest animals ever? Why are we the luckiest? I feel. So Why oh. did it turn off? Which camera was that? Four. Oh my God! Never Mike that. Evans. He switched the camera for one time. I can press the four one time <laughs> ever. Never again. Sorry, guys. He switched the camera for that uh, don't exist. Sorry, we call that we call that crack headedry. Hey, it was a crack headedry moment. <laughs> yeah, got jealous. A, Mike, it's a jungle. In it's here. the same way that Randy started acting up when he got jealous. He wasn't getting attention. I wanted attention. We mentioned that's Lauren. You. We mentioned Lauren. He was like, oh, we're going blackout. Yeah, I go, excuse me, guys. Hello. Keep talking shit. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. He's getting cocky with it. That reminds me. So Max, my twin brother and I, when we would, uh, over Christmas, we would get jobs at Gap and Baby Gap. And they had the head, the speakers. Headset. The headset things. And they had like 13 channels, but they only used two of them. So Max and I would meet on like channel 11 and just be talking and walking around and always get in trouble. What were you talking about? We'd like see someone go by and be like, did you just see like Jen whatever walk by? Was that so-and-so? Did you see who just came in? We just talked shit. <laughs> and we'd like meet at the food court and stuff. But the, the managers would always come on and be like, get off of channel 13. I think you could see the little light blinking when you go on the channel. Yeah. But it was cute. That's the last time manager? I talked to Max. <laughs> the last time I've heard from my brother. We went to Christmas. We saw Max for 10 motherfucking seconds. Mm. I talked to him on FaceTime the other day longer. The snake got him. Here's the thing. The snake's going to burn me together with my twin. Why are you itching? Randy, why are you doing so much annoying things? We're going to replace you with another snake. Randy, do you want to sit on Papa's lap? No. Yes, he does. I oh, don't want to hold that stinky, stinky bastard. What if Randy held the mic with his paw? <laughs> <laughs> That's the equivalent. Randy. Randy. Here, I'll hold the Come here. stinky bastard. I don't like that he was itching. <laughs> I don't want him to have fleas. Oh, he's so cute. His oh. little penis. I love my dog. All right, guys. We penis. have both animals in here now. Oh. One annoying boy and one very oh, nice boy holding the microphone. Oh, cute. Randy. <laughs> Randy, stop. Oh my god. Oh Randy. Go, go. Stop being Let me pow pow him. Give him pow pows in his ass. I have a snake in my you have to bring him to me. <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. Pow pows. Go. Oh my god. What's this? You want your skunk? You want it? Go get it. <laughs> He's dumb. But yeah, so we Todd and I have been having fun budgeting for the first time in five years together. I'm used to it. I've 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 learned how to stretch out a hundred dollars for as long as I can. <laughs> and uh it's easy. Should we tell them some tips? I got some tips to yeah, share. Yeah, let's tell some tips. So guys, if you or find yourself and you've got no money 
and you're going to be home for a while and you're like, oh man, I'm probably going to get hungry, but I don't really have money to get that much food. Get yourself a bag of sunflower seeds. This is okay? so white trash. <laughs> a bag of sunflower seeds. This is seeds. the white side. That way, when you eat the sunflower seeds, it feels like you're eating a lot and your mouth has something to do because you're eating, you're chewing, <laughs> spitting, eating, and a bag of sunflower seeds, that'll last you all day. I love to burn the two calories I'm eating. I love when I'm eating two calories a day and burning but them. But most of it is an oral fixation. That's the thing. Most of your eating habits come from your oral fixation. You want something Are in your mouth. Are you doing Cuberman? <laughs> I'm doing you. I'm doing me. <laughs> <laughs> this is just Dr. Todd. Most of your problems with overeating come from this Not oral fixation. Not staring directly at the sun. <laughs> we love Huberman. We met Huberman came to the comedy store. It was so fun. Oh, it was so cute. We had a, such He's a so fun cute. time. He really is such a cutie. He's a good guy. He's a good man. He told me not to do a zempic because I'll lose my bod. It is. Oh, I, I'm telling you, goodness. I can feel in my body that this is good for me. <laughs> I think if I was having bad side effects, I'd be like, this is not good for me. This is like, this drug was made for my brain. I feel great. Well, we'll have a uh, Huberman on soon, guys, and he'll break it down for you word by word. Sunflower seed by sunflower <laughs> seed. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good hack for uh, balling on a budget. What else? Um, Today I had a really exciting... Okay, because I never like check to see if like the sale items have gone on sale or not. But today I had to. I was like, oh, fuck, I got to make sure. So Todd was like, I'm going to cook pasta. I was like, we need a protein. So we went and got shrimp. I went to Whole Foods. I'm still bougie. I can't help it. I didn't go to Irwin, though. <laughs> but we went to Whole Foods and uh, I went to Whole Foods. I got shrimp. And then in the seafood area, there were these Dungeness crabs. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to get a crab. <laughs> And they were $9.99 a pound. I'm like, oh my God, I love sale crab. <laughs> oh, I love a sale crab. I might lose it a little more weight. It did taste like a sale crab. It wasn't really. great. And I was full because I'm on Ozempic, so I'd already eaten a whole plate of pasta. So I see the crab, and the guy gives me the shrimp first, then the crab. I go to check out, and the guy, I look, and he had done the same price as the shrimp, which was $11.99 a pound. So I'm going to the guy at the self checkout. I'm like, he priced this wrong. And we're talking, it's a pound and a half. So it was like $3 at most. The guy's like, well, how much do you think it would be? And I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, you know what? You get a free crab. He goes, free for crab? your trouble, you get a free crab. And then I said, thank you. And then I picked up the bag and the eggs and it broke and the eggs fell. And he had to clean up my eggs. And did you get new eggs? I got new eggs. Oh, my God. She out here getting new eggs, getting new crabs. And then crabs. I put everything, because the bag broke, he put it in a little a little carrier for me and I just put that right in the car and we now Ooh, have that on our Now house. we have a, 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 a Whole Foods Todd's basket. Like, Todd's like, <laughs> I was like, this is how we- Wow, eat. she's been poor for one day and she's already stole a basket. <laughs> <laughs> already stole a Whole Foods basket, baby. Back, unless I find a cute reason to keep it. Mm -hmm. It's not good, it's not good vibes to shoplift to steal. But it didn't feel like stealing. It felt like I needed it for the bag. The bag Sometimes broke. it is good vibes. Sometimes I feel good when I steal a thing from Target. What do you steal that you like? You know, sometimes it's like, what am I going to pay sixty dollars for a like a what like a cleaner or something? What cleaner sixty dollars? I don't know. What am I going to pay sixty dollars for a fucking thing? This is your accent, your shoplifting <laughs> accent. So you just take care. Here's a tip, guys: how to shoplift at Target. <laughs> <laughs> You take a bunch of stuff, you go to the self-checkout, it's easy. You scan one, you put one in the bag for free. You scan one, <laughs> you put one in the bag for free. You scan one, you put it in for free. And then you got three free things. Todd one stole me over the pandemic. He stole me. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how hard it was to exercise, get exercise equipment over the pandemic? Uh -huh. Like there were no weights, there was nothing. So we saw this thing from Shark Tank that was like, basically like, it looked like a long, like plastic skateboard, basically. With a little and you bowing sit, in the you middle. And you like, you stand on it and you spin. And you spin your hips like this. I think like Lori is the one that invested in it. You s s go like this with your Todd hips. Todd yeah. stole me one of those. <laughs> like he was just holding it as we left. You act like you scan it, you go, oh, oh, okay, it's scanned. And then you go. <laughs> And if they stop you, just go, oh, shit, I thought I scanned that. Oh, uh, sorry, I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. You, you have to have you go, the you money. Go, no, you go, I'll pay for that. 
And then you get your bag and you go, do you take snakes? <laughs> <laughs> and then they run away. They go, ah! And the snake goes, Sss. I do want to become like walking around Venice Beach with a snake, girl. This is my oh. slot game telling me that I have a limited time for a reward. You, I've been playing the wind slot machine. we could train him to hold a microphone and he could go on stage and with the snake around your neck and you just go like this and put the microphone in it and you could just stand like that. How crazy would that be? Should I have the snake in my special? <laughs> you just you walk around like you're doing like a TED talk where your hands are free and everything, but you just have a snake around your neck holding the mic. <laughs> a wireless mic. <laughs> you know, like TED, they have like the mic that goes around like the ear. <laughs> oh my god! How about when we're doing Man on the Street? He like he moves his tail out and hands it to the person and brings it back. We train him when he hears someone talking, he moves the mic to them. <laughs> we have good man on the street coming out. And also my promo for I'm coming to Edmonton. Oh, I do want to say, so I'm going to the Santa Ana Casino in Albuquerque. That's March 8th and 9th. It's going to be so fun or 7th and 8th. But we went to 10,000 Waves in Santa Fe, which is like this amazing Japanese spa. It was, I'm telling you, I had like a magical, it was a fucking true vacation. Because you weren't there. Oh, my God. So I finally got a break from this fucking guy. My old man. Oh, my God. My old man over here. <laughs> I did that, and there was a little jiggle. There won't be much jiggle soon. My cut to me? Guys, how do you guys think my chest is? I was talking to Annie. We, we were talking about this. Here's what's funny about Todd. I was like, does it look like I've been bench pressing? You have, like, like, nipples that look like their breasts. That's the problem. It looks like I've been bench pressing every day of my life. Doesn't he look jacked? Yeah. Doesn't he look like he's been working out? Yeah. There you go. Does he? Um, you don't have to lie, but tell us the truth. <laughs> Does he kind of look like he's been like thickening up? I'm being dead serious. I think Todd, you look like you're in a little better shape than the last couple times I saw you. How do you like that? Looks good, man. <laughs> okay, that's actually not nice what he said because we saw him like three days ago, so we know he's lying. <laughs> no, dude, I just know Todd, that. No, but do you remember what Todd used to look like? Yeah. He was so skinny. skinny. He was skinny a skinny skelly. Like yeah, you. even like three years ago, four years ago. I found you up. It's all these editing jobs I've had in the past five years. When That's I got into the comedy store, working at the comedy store, I was very skinny and then sitting down all day. Your mom sent crazy. a picture to me today of you very skinny from six years ago. Oh, I think I saw it. My hat was like. His head's so this. little. Todd's chin's very little, so it's like when he has when he's skinny, he's just got this like little <laughs> face. And look how big fat his face is now. It's cute. It ain't fat, it's muscular. <laughs> a jaw. Look at his jaw. But he does, he gains weight and he just looks like he's been working out a little. He looks beefed up. Well. We think. Don't Maybe you, you guys don't. Uh, those are tips that I will not share. That's I'll on my teach, Patreon. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what he does. <laughs> he gets hot fries, okay? Mm -hmm. He opens them. He eats them. He simultaneously with the other hand oh, oh. peels a Slim Jim. <laughs> I guess I was going to say, don't forget the okay. Slim Jim. Okay. <laughs> he goes, what, is, what should I wash this down with? A Yoohoo. Oh, How no. about a Yoohoo? More like a G Fuel, <laughs> sugar free G Fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Todd eats like. And then I edit, 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 edit. You, you sit eat on your like ass a and truck driver, it. like you're on the road and you can only get gas station food. <laughs> That's right, baby. That's my life. But I eat so healthy next to him, and he, it doesn't ever inspire him. I He's eat never once been inspired to eat healthy. I eat healthy. What's something healthy you've eaten? I had my breakfast today was an apple, two bananas, and orange juice. That's because we were out of food and we're broke. <laughs>
her whole her whole being. <laughs> he puts it all over my being, and my whole body looks so young. One skin's goal is not only to just improve how we look, but to optimize the skin's biology. In short, this stuff's amazing. And it is. I, I really, I love it. It's so good. And I think a lot of you guys are buying it. They seem to be pretty happy with this because you guys trust me and you believe me. So write in the comments how one skin has helped you. It's so good. It gives you such a, like a... One Skin is the world's first longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code Annie at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co code Annie. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Support the show and tell them Annie sent you and the snakes. New year, healthier skin. That's one skin. Be like me and look young. I'm about to be rich again. Don't worry. It's good, guys. It's good to... It's fun. To it's To take been a fun. break on uh, excessive spending. Pat and I have been having a really fun time being strapped <laughs> for cash. Yeah, because my job, I got off for three weeks, which I thought was going to be a nice, fun <laughs> idea, but then I was... Once you run out of money that first week of that. <laughs> you go, oh, what am I going to do know? for two weeks? <laughs> no, Christmas was wild. We spent so much money, like the flights, the hotel, all of the stuff, the, the rental gifts. car, the gifts. Like we, I balled out on my nieces and nephews and um, I forgot that taxes, my end of the year taxes. And I forgot that. That's the thing about the, the new like, year too. All, when you get paid on podcasts, it's like quarterly. And it's like, it, you have so many different people paying you that it's like, it takes like a long time to get all that. And with the new year, you think it's like all celebration. And then you go, oh, wait, rent is due. Bills are due now. It's like you forget that all that is due. But right I after. feel like I've been learning a lot about like manifestation and money and stuff. And it's like you just keep your vibes high. You just keep yourself feeling rich and you're fine. It just all chill. money's energy. Money's energy. If you're working for money, you're doing it wrong, okay? And then there's a little kid on Instagram that always says that. Who? Remember that little kid I showed you? It's like, obviously, his dad, he's like, people, the, the government makes you think that you got to work eight hours a day, seven days a week to make your rent. They're lying to you. It's about your energy or whatever. I'm like, who is making their kid say this? It's like a seven-year-old. I know. They're indoctrinating. No, they're trying to get rich off their kid saying that. They're indoctrinating them, too. Well, it's a cult. Try to start a cult. I have a snake. I'm so close. <laughs> what would the cult be? Rep reptile opia? Reptile opium. You have opium. to smoke opium with reptiles. You can't be afraid. I just feel so good. Like, and it feel it's exciting to feel this good when my circumstances are not ideal like obviously I'd like I went to the mall today and to get my IV and I have a membership at a mall clinic so I went to get an IV and do an LED bed and I did cryo because I'm going to Edmonton this weekend so I decided to do cryo as a to get ready for the cold weather that's my promo video and I wore the fake tits my fake boobs and so the people that work there all the like RNs and stuff had to help me put the fake boobs on it was a scene it was so funny did you record that no, I wanted to record that part, but I was in, I was Your getting it done. Two teenies were hanging out? My two teenies. <laughs> but it was funny. And Todd's going to edit that clip while he's editing this tonight. Ooh, she's got editors that work for her. I also have one that lives with me. <laughs> we'll send it over to Mike. I don't trust Mike. He was going to put it on camera four. <laughs> Mike, Mike does good. Uh, he does no, I'm going to see the clip. It's going to be a camera four clip. <laughs> no, I have to do it with someone that I am already have already paid for the month. I can't be owing him more money. He's broke. I can't not pay him for his work. He knows. Sure. He's like, don't I'm not working for you for free, bitch. <laughs> um, Mike, I had an idea for you. Oh, yeah? I think you should... Um, Figure out a way to rent a booth at the, what do you call it? It's not a swap market. What do you, swap, what is it? Like in Venice? No, the one, like at Melrose. What is that? 
At the farmer's Swap meat market? Swap farmer's market. You should rent a thing. You should make a bunch of like unique, because Michael makes like a bunch of prints and stuff. You should make a bunch of really cool, unique sweatshirts and stuff like that. Just like one-off, see if people yeah. will buy them. I should. I don't know how much those booths cost. Do you know? Because your ex. Oh, my God. That was at the uh, um, Fair, Fairfax one at the high school. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Fairfax fucking flea market. Flea market. Yeah. yeah. Her, Hare Krishna, uncle or whatever, used to sell sandals, wooden sandals. And there, the woods was from some Hare Krishna place. Used to sell them for like three grand each. Whoa. A pair. Really? And people would buy them? And people would buy them because you'd be like, these are sandals made of wood. It's completely uncomfortable. The strap <laughs> that goes between your toe is wooden. What? And you just walk around, clink, 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 clink. <laughs> it's all over three grand. Because he told the people like, oh yeah, no, it's Hare Krishna wood. It was like one of those Japanese where they had like the wooden clamps on the bottom. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Well, and it was just like clink, clink, clink. <laughs> I have a slightly more conventional product than that. Yeah. yeah, you know. And he would make a bunch of other wooden things with like this, like special wood. So, how much do you think it would cost you to make like a hoodie? It can it like would a cost, blank hoodie would be what twenty bucks. You'd have to get the. Hoodie. It would cost me under twenty bucks to make it. Under twenty bucks. Yeah, twelve or fifteen. So for then a you sell it for thirty, forty, forty. That does seem good. Well, we're getting into the idea. merch, and we know the merch people oh are Oh, my not God, good. you guys. I'm just going to discuss this here. I don't know if we're going to talk about it on Trash Tuesday. I'm sure they're going to make an announcement. The merch company that we were doing our Trash Tuesday stuff with went bankrupt. out of, it went bankrupt. So now, on my <laughs> brokest hour, I have to fucking pay all my fans back. <laughs> Money that I got no money from. It's so weird that it's not like I got paid. Like the company, like they paid. But I was like, we we're yeah. talking about. It. I was like, I'm, we got to pay them back. I would, yeah, rather, yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna. I'll make the money back somewhere else. It's fine. But <laughs> a lot of these merch companies, guys, they're they're really coming out as bad people. My merch hasn't gotten bad, thank God. But we did switch merch companies. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Our Revolt, personal merch has Revolt been good. has been in hot water. Mr. Beast merch company. They've been doing sketchy shit. It's just a bunch of people that don't know what they're doing, doing something that is very You important. can't spend the money that you make before you send the fucking product out. Yeah. That's crazy. It's like people, like, I just don't understand how my fans and my listeners paid money. They accepted the money, cashed the checks. They didn't give and you the money. We didn't get the money. We don't have the money. So they don't give them the money. They use the money and then they do something they with the money. They spend it on themselves and or whatever. And they go, oh, we don't have enough money to pay. And then, yeah. But I mean, I know people that are, we, ours luckily, like, they got a bunch of them out before it went bankrupt. So it wasn't that many people. Um, so the numbers aren't that big, but. It's a shame, guys. Uh, I really wish. But everyone. Wish you you'll all get, best. If you got them, you will get my money. I promise. I will give you my money for it. I promise. And um, uh, Annie Wood merch won't be going through any of that. So if you guys want to buy some Annie Wood merch, it's still. Yeah, my merch is doing good. It's still good. <laughs> we got to come so out with sad. new merch. But I, because I, I didn't know any of this was happening. And then I looked at comments because I've been pretty comment free. I've been good about comments. She's been pretty good. I'm not triggered. I don't care. You guys can think whatever you want about me. <laughs> we have merch of. So we have the All Taints merch, yeah. which is a knockoff All Saints gag goof. Yep. And then we also made one for Scotch and Soda. Did we make that? I made it, yes. I called it Crotch and Soda, and I made a palm tree and two coconuts at the bottom. Oh, so it looked so like funny. a dog. And someone said, oh, this is a dumb idea and didn't want to make it, but whatever. So let us let that us know, crazy. guys. It wasn't me, but it was my favorite <laughs> representative, so I don't want to touch it. I love them. So let us know, guys, if that's something you're into. We also made another one. Oh, oh we my made God. A, we the made Annie Wood one was so We made an Annie good. Wood one where it's Nick Offerman in uh, The Last of Us making out with that dude. Remember when there were the two guys were making out? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like Annie Wood, but like in the words in the is that picture. Is that making out. <laughs> I, I made that way back when. That show had just come out. Yeah. Last of Us was out, and then someone else was like, mm, that's not a good idea. So I was like, oh, all right. 
So that didn't get released. But let us know if you guys are interested in that because maybe we will release it. Or we release and we'll come up with something else. We and, wanted, and we'll we were thinking maybe doing else. three girls or two girls, one cup. Yeah, we were thinking of having uh, Annie Wood and in the letters is the two girls, one cup or the lemon party. You know what lemon yeah, party is? No, I can't remember. It's just a bunch of old men and it's a picture of a bunch of old men in like a circle f***ing each other. <laughs> <laughs> And there's just shit and piss all over the floor. <laughs> and it's I one like of the most it. disgusting things, but... But we also like have... That. Okay, so did I ever tell the story of my Danny DeVito drawing? You guys know the Danny DeVito drawings, the pictures and stuff. So did I tell the story? Okay. So I was, I was writing jokes with Benji Aflalo, who is... You may know him from... He was the counterpart to Esther's TV show, Alone Together. He's a comic at the comedy store. We were writing when I first moved into town. I was pretty good friends with him. And um, we were sitting at his house um, and we were supposed to be writing jokes. And I started doodling. And he was like, Annie, stop drawing. That's never going to make you money. Like jokes is money. And I was like, I'm in the middle. Like I like the idea had just like struck me like lightning. That's like how most of my jokes and most of my ideas happen. So is he? I don't want him to go away. Oh, is he going is. back? Is he slithering off? Oh, no, he's on the other side of you. Yeah, he's just looking at the hand. Oh, he got scared. <laughs> <sighs> and then I got scared. But then you drew the thing. And then... So I drew it, and then I posted it on my Instagram, and the Huffington Post, um, I knew a girl that worked there, and she's like, we want to do an article about this picture, and it's the picture of me looking in the mirror, and it's Danny DeVito as the reflection. And um, so she wrote an article about it, but she didn't, like, watermark the drawing and say that it was my drawing in any way. So, so people stole the it. Drawing, the drawing went incredibly viral and no one knew I drew it. Like no one had any clue. And it was on Reddit. It was on everything. And this was like in the beginning of Reddit. So it was just like blowing the fuck up. It was everywhere. And um, it was killing me because I was like, oh, I can't believe I'm not getting, you know, I would like meme pages would post it. Like it was just every fucking two days it would go viral for like 10 years. It was crazy. So I ended up, what is he doing? He's climbing up the back of the hand. He is. He's not moving. From <laughs> I here, know. Though. He's just slowly climbing up the back of the hand. I want him back around my neck. I know. It was I so cute. Him. But anyway, so um, so it was like really getting me. And I kept thinking, oh, I want to make merch out of it. But I was like living in my car. I was like, I don't know how you make merch. I didn't know how to do anything. And um, <laughs> so finally, I did. I was doing Rogan for the second time. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna fucking, I gotta make the merch. So I found this merch guy, Dylan. I can't remember upstate merch, upstate merch. I don't work with him anymore, but. Don't be scratching your ear. Why? What are you getting, ear boogers out? No, it just itched. I was on that cup. You don't get ear boogers in here. You get, you get ear boogers there. I don't. <laughs> that might be, it's an Asian thing. <laughs> <laughs> I I've got ear burgers there. Stinky, In stinky here? ear burgers. Yes. No. You got to clean there. You, you don't Todd, clean there? Obviously, I do because I've never had an ear burger up there. He's lying, right? You guys get ear burgers. You got to clean up in here. That's so disgusting. You get ear burgers up in the cuff? Yes, it hides in here. That's so disgusting. Guys, write in the comments. Do you guys get ear boogers up in guys, here? Guys, comment, like, subscribe. You <laughs> click that bell, okay? You let us know. <laughs> All Do right. it for Brian Barchek. But anyway, so Rogan, so before I, it was like my, I think it was the last time I, was, I did it, but I turned them into t-shirts and I was like, Shh. Randy, shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're going to get one of these, a knuckle sandwich. So you got them? Don't. Don't hush me and <laughs> so hurry me I'm up not, on my own so podcast. So you got them. You went on Rogan, and then I got them last minute, right? So I got him. He printed me two shirts out and sent them to me, and I go, I bring it in, and Rogan looks at the shirt and he goes, "I don't get it." And I'm like, "What do you mean you don't? Everyone in the world gets it." He's like, "I was like, oh, okay." So he like doesn't wear the shirt, and I'm like, "I'm wearing it." I'm like, "It's fine." I go, I release it to the universe. I go, "Who cares? It'll work out." I thought he was going to like wear it with me and it would be like, you know, but he was like, what is this shit? And, um, we go into his, into his studio, the air conditioner's broken. He is wearing a long sleeve shirt. The only short sleeve shirt around <laughs> is my fucking shirt. So he wears it. I'm like, yes. So he puts it on and, uh, and we wear it for the episode. And then like, it's just been selling consistently since then, but we made 
posters of it. They're really cute. They're like this big. And some of them are pre-signed, so you can buy those. We'll put them in the no, the show notes. You I made haven't promoted them yet. Yeah, he made posters. Oh. Um, and they're really cute. And so there's some already that are signed for a little bit more. And then there's just the regular ones and have my art. That's amazing. Isn't that a beautiful story? That's such a beautiful That's long so story. That's so funny. It was only long because you were going like this. We've been watching uh, the morning show. Yeah. And Jennifer Aniston has a uh, a person that when they start going on, she goes, happy birthday. That's so now I'm starting to do that time. to Annie now. Starting. You've been doing this my whole relationship with you. Um, Santa Fe was amazing. I don't know how to like express how amazing Santa Fe was. I don't know how to express, express it. Express it with your snake. Well, and his head's kind of in between the fingers, so don't pull him. Might pull his head off. <laughs> oh, God, we killed him. <laughs> uh, how about we get some of these headlines that Lauren cooked up for Why us? Why don't you get his head lined out of this thing? I don't want to kill him. Move him. He's just resting his head on the finger. It's actually kind of cute. He probably thinks it's nice and cold, so he's putting his head on there. Oh, it's... <laughs> Look at my other son. There she, there it goes. Oh my there God! Goes. Come on, Channel Four, give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, oh my God! <laughs> he hit himself with the fake hammer. It's a really good fake. Um, we have the Golden Globes winners list. Oh, I wanted to know some of Annie's favorites. What ones she thinks got snubbed. And I only yeah, watched. Yeah, yeah. What was your Joe movie of the Coy. year? I don't remember what movies I saw oh this year. Oh my god! I literally saw Joe Coy's thing. That's all I saw. Barbie, Oppenheimer, saw Barbie. Killers of the Flower Moon. I saw a little bit of Killers of the Flower Moon. I thought it was. It made me too horny. I had to turn it off. <laughs> um. Oh my god! It's the hottest I've ever seen Leonardo since uh, What's Eating what Gilbert is, Grape. What is little middle part? Since What's Eating Gilbert Grape. <laughs> It's the hottest role. Um, I saw. We saw Saw Ten. Saw Saw Ten. That was good. <laughs> I liked Saw. I saw. What did we um, watch? You guys like year? Succession, right? Yeah, really Succession was Succession. good. I liked Barbie. Barbie was good. Todd wouldn't see it because he doesn't like women. I'm not a girl. I'm a boy. You sure? I'm a boy. That's not what your mangina told me this morning. <laughs> I didn't do no mangina this morning. Not this morning I did the flop, 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 flop. He this does morning. do his flop, 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 flop <laughs> every morning. He goes, look, and he flops. It's either mangina or the flap. He does both. But we did like Succession. That's the one that won best. I liked Beef to a lot. I'm glad Beef Ali was won. good. Yeah, she won that. But I don't know. But I thought my I have more takes on the Joe Coy thing. So I was what I was saying before is like I think he's used to just crushing. So then it was. It's not going to be a good audience. They're like serious actors and they don't want to be made fun of. And so and you everyone, have to like yeah. fake. I think that most people don't get lots of laughs at the award show and that they kind of just talk Can. through it. And it's, you know. But I thought, I mean, I thought his jokes were fun. I didn't think there was anything. Yeah. I didn't go like, ooh, yikes. I was like, the Barbie one was funny where he was like, that everyone's mad at. Where he was like, this Mr. Actor was talking about. Oh, well, my mic. He's sliding. He's sliding. You got it, Bo. You got to get he's him. He's letting because... go of the mic. Oh my god! How many things does she have Just up here? Just get the f snake and <laughs> shut the f up, or I'll fucking kick you out of my apartment. Walt, come my on, life. Walt. Where are you going, buddy? Right in my face. He pointed him at my face. <laughs> but if he bit you, would you get mad at me? Would you get yes. rid of him? Yes. <laughs> If, he, if you put him in my face and he bit me, yes. All right, so now he's just holding on to the mic from down there. It's still cute. Do the wide. Look at him. <laughs> I love him. You love Walter? I love him. I do like him the most. What other good shows did we see this year? Succession was good. We're really enjoying the morning show. Yeah. Was that the new season this year? No, I don't think the, so, right? We're, we watched... We're on 2019, baby. Oh, he's going to her hand. She's a little nervous when he goes to the hand. <laughs> and the tit. He really goes under my goes nose. To her nippies. He smells the cheese in I'm her nipples. I'm trying nipple. to think of what else I can tell you about Santa Fe. It was just like, I just had such a profound weekend. I don't even. 
I feel like there's no problems and there's no stress and there's no issues and everything's great and working out. That's and beautiful. I really realized, oh, you know what I did? Okay, so my friends found this end of the year thing, which I don't know when his face is just looking at me. I just think he's going to go. He does. It just happens. He's so cute. I mean, we are trusting this thing that we just met yesterday with, uh, with a lot of trust, but he's been. It will reward us. He's been very rewarding. So. But anyway, so we did this end of the year thing. Maybe I can post the link of it or something somewhere. Maybe I'll put it on. Oh, I'll put it on the um, Annie Wood Instagram. But basically, it's like a long form that you fill out. Hi, baby. Hi, honey. Do you think Whitney would like? I bet you Whitney would like the snake. Yeah. She's an animal girl. If like Andrew Schultz was like, snakes are cool, Whitney would be like, I love the snake. <laughs> <laughs> I love Whitney. We're going to do something really fun with you her. You want me to hold Valentine's him? Day. No, I'll hold him. Um, okay, so. Oh, yeah, that's on Valentine's Day? Oh, I just realized. It's like the day after Valentine's yeah. Day. It's cute. That's so cute. That's I adorable. love my Whitney so much. I think about it. Honestly, when I do hallucinogens, I always think about how much I love Whitney. She feels like my soul sister. Hey, sister, so sister. <laughs> no. Gotta get that hole, mister. That, that hole? Was good, that goes. Oh my God. That's a great line. If that's what the line is, that's amazing. How does it go? Hey, sister, so sister. You know that song? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that hole, mister. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but anyway so there's a year in review they have you first you go through your calendar and you write down you go back through your calendar over the last year and you write down all the monumental things you did i worked so hard last year and all i did was stress and feel like i was being lazy and not doing enough and i fucking busted my ass i was looking at my calendar i maybe had 20 days not on the road like i was on the road all the time two podcasts um, performing every night, having to come up with new material, Five having to come up snakes, with interesting... a skin. So many snakes. <laughs> my beautiful boy, my ugly boy. <laughs> it was, but I'm so proud of myself. And so that's what I want to take into this next year is really like, like being proud of myself for my accomplishment and celebrating my accomplishments and not like looking at what I don't have, just being like happy for what I've done. And you manifested such a good And I love snake. my snake. Oh. You guys, I love my snake. I love my new boots. And this was, so I took mushrooms and we went down Canyon Road in Santa Fe, which is like where all the galleries are. And it was snowing. So I'm walking in my Uggs. My feet were fucking soaking wet, but I was so high on mushrooms that I was like, are my feet wet? I was like, wait, are my feet wet? And then when I was like, I guess they're wet. I kind of decided they were wet and I wasn't making it up. I was like, maybe they're just cold. And I was like, no, they're wet. And I was like, all right. But if I tell everyone my shoes are wet, Am I not like going with the flow and am I being like a baby about things? Or and you if were I slosh and you were. Yeah. And then I was like, but if I don't tell them, am I being a doormat? Am I thinking that my feelings don't matter? Should I suck it up, Buttercup, or should I be like, we need to go to a shoe store? So finally, at the end, when I could start speaking again, I fucking dosed myself accidentally. Oh, my every God. painting I looked at in every gallery was like, why would Pulsing you think, and breathing? Why would you think you would not take care of your wet shoes? You I thought think, that was a hindrance on the vibes? I just was like, <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, you know, in life, sometimes you just have wet shoes and <sighs> what? You gotta get dry shoes. I was I realized you can get that, but I was tripping. Foot. I think that's what I worry about in my life a lot. Like I I don't I had this body worker I went to, this like, I don't know what she really calls herself, but she was like she started like kind of poking me and like being like kind of like hurting me a little bit. And she was like, move. And I was like, what? And she's like, you're just taking it. She's like, you should be like, oh, pick it up. Who is it? Jordan. Wisely? Yeah, pick it up. Jordan. We're on Annie Wood. We're recording Annie Wood. Are you really right now? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, ask me a question. What's up? Will you hold my snake? <laughs> I just got a big ass snake. He's so cute. <laughs> wow. Oh, why? How did the Why uh, you don't like snakes? I mean they're the fine. champ. Like, oh <laughs> the 
Oh, champ's a pussy. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I, I did snake, all right, and I won that season, but they had their mouths taped shut. That's kind of cheating. They taped their mouths? That's mean. Wait, I don't get it. What TJ's happened? going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They taped their mouths. Well, some of them were poisonous, so they taped the poisonous snakes. Yeah, no, we don't have there. poisonous snakes. Todd, I can see wanting poisonous snakes, and it's not going to happen. First of all, it's venomous. It's venomous, venomous. Yay. Squeeze Todd's nipples for me and uh, have a good time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's a little behind the scenes. There's some plans in the works, guys. We have a fun. We'll cut around, cut around, but there's some plans in the works. We got some plans with Jordan. We have some fun live show stuff. Let's Reddit. You want to do a Reddit? Yeah. Let's do a Reddit. I'm trying to have better posture, too. The snake was helping. But anyway, guys, I want you guys to, like, look at your year and what your goals are going to be for this next year. I think that everyone could steal my goal of to just celebrate the things that you've done. And I know Michael can because Michael was down on himself last episode because of his birthday. Like a loser. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else happened when I was on ketamine? Ketamine takes away all of your negative feelings. So I, you know, how everyone's like, don't compete with other people. Don't compare yourself to other people, all that stuff. I like understand the concept and I always think I'm not doing it, but I am comparing myself to people. You I'm like, always do. And so it took it out. And I was like, if I take away comparing myself to other people and I just go off of like who I am, what I've accomplished, what I've done, it's like fucking unbelievable. I'm so proud of myself. I've done so well. And it's crazy that I have found ketamine. Oh, it's crazy that every, everyone's know. been telling her that all year, but it takes a drug for her to understand. <laughs> well, you have to like, Feel it. You have to feel it. Like okay. I feel my snake. Read it. <laughs> How do snake. you tell someone that their whole vibe is toxic slash bitter? I have an acquaintance with a lot of annoying personality quirks and she's getting worse, spiraling downward. She's deeply insecure, constantly bragging about being extremely competent, though she's been unemployed for several years and not happy with her, her lot in life. She blames others for her lack of success and has a new theory that there's a professional conspiracy to steal her ideas and lock her out of employment, which is just untrue and sad. Overall, her vibe is bitter, which is a very unattractive trait. She overcompensates for her lack of success by being arrogant. I had lunch with her and a couple of mutual friends the other day, and we all left talking about how we don't want to hang out with her anymore. I'm frankly kind of done with her, but I almost want to give her some constructive criticism so that maybe she can get out of this spiral. Is that a good idea? I hate to abandon her, but I also don't really want to be associated with her unless she changes. You can cut any bitch out of your life you want. I cut a bitch out of my life, and sometimes I think about it, and I'm like, that might be the best, strongest thing I've ever done. Not because, like, she mattered that much, or like, the, but to take that stand of, like, I felt so mean about it. Like if you're like, oh no, I want to be. And this concept of being a good friend is actually so unhealthy. It's whatever you're willing to do. If someone's being toxic and negative, that's going to rub off on you. It's like, and it's, a, I have friends like that. I mean, I have friends that like are worth putting up with when they're negative and I can talk to, but I have a friend who was going through like really negative spins with me. And I was like, I can't complain anymore. And I had to realize, though, that I was and Todd always says this, like when he hears me complaining to somebody, he's like, you just open it up. They're now going to be like a complaining friend, like they're mm -hmm. going to call and complain. And so it's like I'm not I'm no longer like vibing at that level. So it's like I can't I can't I don't have time to suffer fools like that anymore. But if they're like my friend and I believe that they can change and would want to change. Um, I just tell them that I'm not interested in that anymore. And then I'm like, do you want to like hear some of the meditations I've been listening to and stuff like that? And if they do, I send them to them. And um, if they don't, and if they don't, it's like, it's not my job to like teach people how to be in, but you know, maybe the lesson of all of her friends stopping being friends with her will make her look inward. And maybe her telling her if this girl tells her, I mean, she could tell her. I mean, you can if you want, but you just, and you're not going to be friends with her anyway, so who cares? And don't feel bad about abandoning someone. It's like, if they're not like, you have like, you have your life, you have things you have to do, you have your goals and the things you want to do to make an impact on the world in however way you want. If someone's getting in the way of that, they need, they're, it, it, you can't, they got to go. Rise up or not. I feel like I've spent all my life like lowering my vibration to like 
meet people, make them feel better. Like, oh, you feel bad about yourself. Oh, you feel left out. I can't tell you how many times I've been like, I think the only cool person that's talked to like someone before. And then they're like so attached to you. And then they're not learning their lesson for themselves. We're all, this is what I was talking to about my, with my girls this weekend. It's like, we're all like whole in ourselves, right? Like that's what you have to learn. You have every answer. Everything is in you. Like you as a full person are whole and enough and everything. And when you meet other people and you hang out with other people and you have fun with them, you get entertainment and all that stuff. That's like a bonus, but you can't be like looking outward for those things. And that's something I've struggled with, like always wanting like affirmation that I'm doing well and stuff. And I'm just realizing like, I got to give that to myself, but I have friends like that. Like I had a friend that, that started to really fucking annoy me recently, but she was just, I had to end up doing everything for her. I just started realizing all the things she wouldn't do. She would just like act like things weren't working. Like her Uber app wasn't working and stuff. And you're like, she would act like it's not working. Yeah. She'd be like, Oh, my Uber's not working. It's like, yes, it is, bitch. She just wants, she's like, you do yours. I'm like, what? And I'm like busy. I'm not going to go look at her phone, but I'm like, I'm not ordering the Uber, bitch. Like it was just like little things she'd do. Cause she didn't want to do stuff, you know? And then kind of negative, everything she would share would be really negative and blamey. And it's just like, I am now being a little bit shut off to her and that might hurt her feelings, but I have to look at it like this. Like maybe that's going to help her and be like a lesson to help her move forward. Was this a comedian's answer? No. It was the shaman answer. That was a shaman answer. But do you know what I mean? I know. And it's like, I need to stop worrying about people's feelings because maybe them feeling a little bit bad is what they need to feel. It's not my responsibility. That's what my, my wrist thing is about to remind me. I'm not here living someone else's life. It's my movie. I cast whoever I want in it. Oh my god. And that's goodness. what I want for you guys too. Oh. Cast everyone in it. And no, I'm not available. <laughs> I can't play your love interest. Well, that was beautiful. You have a response? You know what I do? What do you do? I go like this. Cut, and cut people cut out. Them. And here's oh. the thing. If something happens and you, they can come back into your life, that's great. But it's all about your vibes, keeping them high, surrounding yourself with the people that you want. Did I tell the Steve Harvey's nephew story? Yes. Steve Harvey's nephew. I'll never forget it. Steve Harvey's best advice to him was, and I'll repeat it for the people that didn't see it. It matters who you surround yourself with. When I first saw that and heard him say that, I was like, that sounds shitty. But it does. You can't be around people that are fucking blaming other people, not accepting responsibility, upset all the time. One of my friends was like talking about her mom. Like, I'm like, we're still talking about our moms. We're still mad at our moms. It's like, I have my issues yeah. with my mom and stuff, but I love her and I forgive her. And I don't, it's like, I'm not owed anything. People that think they're owed stuff. I think it's like, I don't have time for that. Oh my God. How many things are going to And fall? why am I going to, why am I going to lower myself to meet you where you're at rather than just vibe high where you can either like, Join me or peace. And I'll leave it off on this. And there's going to be a lot of transitions in my life. And that's for me and for my greater good. So you come with me or you don't. And I'll leave it off on this. The thing about snakes and why they're so therapeutic to me and why I think other people think it's therapeutic <laughs> is because snakes, you have to have no fear with snakes. Because they sense your fear, they pick up on it, and that's when they are, you know, bitey, and that's when they get, when they're afraid, that's when they get, like, really bitey and, and know anxious. Or... Anxious is what I was looking for. And someone said that. I saw someone online say Do that. Do I wake up in the middle of the night being bitey? She's very bitey. And then she's cuddly. But then, but I heard someone talk about it, and they were like, when there's someone... If there's like a group of really happy people in the room and there's one person who's like freaking out, everyone will pick up on that and be like, why is this one guy freaking out? You know, like ever like the whole mood of the room will change from one guy. So it's the same thing with snakes and animals. You have to just so like when you're with these animals, it is like training yourself to be like, OK, be calm, be relaxed. Be cool. Everything's fine. And then when the snake's at your neck, you're just like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. And it is fine. And that's why it's or so Or you're dead and who so cares? Nice. And let me just say, Matthew Perry died really happy. Oh my God. He didn't die happy. 
I promise you he did. I promise you he was Guys, choking on water. <laughs> he needs a sitter. You need someone watching you. It's just being a pool. Well, that was a beautiful episode, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. But here's another thing I want to say. It's like, you can't control things. You have to go with the flow. You want to be flowing in a good direction. Everything good is downstream, right? And I feel like the more you surrender to just like what's happening and just my whole thing is that gets me out of my anxiety is that like timing is divine and that it's like all happening exactly how it's supposed to happen and that everything is perfect and um you might not know why the thing is happening at the time it might feel negative but if you just trust and wait it out it'll be fine but you can't control things like i feel like i've spent so much of my life like trying to grab water you can't grab water she tries to grab water what if you freeze it you can grab ice but you're gonna be cold and i'm gonna go to a tundra <laughs> It's on my kukani. All right, guys. It like. started stroking my kukani. <laughs> guys, like, give us a comment. Maybe I'll just name him Todd and then have relations with him. Give us a comment of what we should name this guy. Should we keep him Walter or should we give him another name? Or what do you guys think? I kind of like Walter. It's a very gentleman name. I love name. him so much. Guys, are you going to be freaked out if we have him every episode? Because we're going <laughs> to. Like, comment, subscribe. Maybe not everyone, but... Probably Click a lot the bell. of them. He's so cute. I love this guy. Look at his colors guy real quick. Click the bell. Look at the colors on this We're guy. We're still hashtag Brian Strong. We hope Brian is still with us, but we don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll find out and we'll get We're back excited to, to watch his it. son take I over mean, the channel. I mean, this guy, he's been fighting and he's like, all right, guys, this is the last of it. And it's been a week later and he's still... He said his goodbye and he <laughs> literally was crying and saying goodbye and said, guys, please keep watching the channel and... <laughs> Comment below what yeah, you want. That's the death of a and YouTuber. And I think our comics are, our comments are keeping him alive. Yeah. Todd was like, we just need a couple more positive comments in the IV. <laughs> no, he's like. He's flatlining, he's, quick. He's, I just imagine we need to click in the bed bell. and someone coming in and putting stuff in his IV and they're like, what is that? He's like, these are likes, comments, subscriptions. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, slowly getting better. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> That's what YouTubers need, guys. Oh, oh he went my back. God. Oh, no. I still don't believe the that camera's dead. It. No. Which wait. camera? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's not four. That's two. Okay, so that's her camera. Yeah. Uh oh. We really do. We love each other. It's the meat and potatoes. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Zeep and Nannies. Yeah. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Zeep and Nannies. I'm going up ayahuasca. I'm about to prosper. Blingy on my drinky, and Randy is living proper. Protector of the sick, she never let her fishes die. Never known to tell a lie, she even fixed Todd's eyes. Shout out to the slugs, shout out Woody's too. Shout out Esther and Kalila and the Annie Wood crew. Cause this is Annie Wood, you know that this is how I'm living. Real and never pretending shit, you know that it's a gift. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Sipa Nannies.